it's just totally not bright right here. But, mm, uh, I don't know. Um, we have Daxton. That's all that matters, right? Who needs lighting? Can you even see him? Can you see the baby? <laughs> he says hello. And so do I. So, this is going to be a car vlog. I don't know what this was. Um, kind of sort of feel like I have an audience. Uh, there's these biker boys hanging out. Well, they're, they're just kids on bikes. But, um, and then there's like construction on the main street, so that's kind of awkward. Um, but then again, it's over there, so I'm just feeling very awkward and I'm very me. But anyway, so I just wanted to do an update and a car vlog update at that. I like this kind of style. I haven't really done this that much, but I think it's just a fun time. So, yeah, I have updates, I guess. But, well, I don't really know where to begin. And I really want Daxton to be comfortable. <laughs> I guess he is. He just falls asleep anywhere. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll just go, I guess. Just get it off my chest. Just ramble, rant about things and stuff that, and I always say this and make fun of myself in this sense, but just talk about things that probably don't matter and things that you probably don't give two poops about. But anyway, I'm just gonna be my rambly ass self. <laughs> Sounds really gross. But anyway, I don't know. Um, it's 4 p.m. A little after 4, I'll be home around 5-ish, or that's like the soonest I can come back home. I got kicked out. No, I'm just kidding. I live at home with my parents, so that's the little background right there. But anyway, we have this, and I don't really know how to phrase this or what it all really means exactly, but we have basically this inspector guy dude, and he might do an appraisal with our house. We might get an appraisal, which helps with insurance and interest of the house, and we might move eventually just in the area, this part of southeastern Idaho, which is all I'll say right now, but doesn't really affect me we're still going to be in the area if we do move before i graduate and it will just be probably a better thing maybe a bigger house maybe we'll build maybe my parents will get their dream house with more land or something it's just kind of up in the air just kind of trying to figure things out um but this is more just to lower the interest rate or whatever terms insert them here i don't know but so there's that. That's why I'm here with Daxton. I just decided to take him for a drive. And I'll turn the camera off and put my things in the car, safe and sound, and just hang out with Daxton outside, go for a walk or something. I've been trying to get better about walks for, obviously, Daxton, but also for myself, too. I'm trying to take care of myself as well. And a lot of people, and there's phrases about this all the time, Oh, and I'll have to be careful. I don't know if I'll get, like, yelled at or told to leave. But, um, anyway. There's, like, construction everywhere. Like, on the road. Like, the busier road. And then, like, cars will be slowing down with the freaking people. Uh, do you see him? I don't know what's going on. Okay, weird. Um, anyway. And then there's, like, construction, like, houses in the background. So many cars. But, anyway, I'll just mind my own business and do my own thing, of course. But, um, yeah, so just, like, taking better care of myself, being nicer and kinder to myself, where I just show self-love and self-care more, and a lot of people, this is what I was going to say, a lot of people kind of leave themselves on the back burner, and they say, oh, if I have time, or after this and this and that, you know, people tend to put other people first, and it's a lot of selfless acts instead of selfish acts obviously granted there are selfish people everywhere and I think everybody is even a little bit on the selfish side in some aspects in some way or another but I think a lot of people like they have good hearts and kind souls and that's just what happens so with me especially being a student and after having ended a job which could be very stressful I'm trying to treat myself with the craziness that I've survived, like with work and the craziness that is going on right now in my life, which is school. So I'm just trying to be smarter about my free time and in my free time do things that will benefit and help me 
and aid my mental health and my inner happiness, peace, and joy. So that includes walking Daxton. So yeah. And then I'm also trying to write, really trying to work on my book more. And I found out in class today that there's this other kid who's also writing a book. He's in my intro to lit class, a literature class. Is that the class I'm thinking of? I can't keep track. I had four classes today. I think it was because it was an afternoon class. It was my hour and a half long class. I have two of those. Two hour and a half long classes back to back. So I'll just go into school because I started talking about that and I can't leave you hanging. I have to continue and go forth with it. So basically my school schedule, I have seven classes, all of which are remote. And due to coronavirus, they have a lot of different options that you can do. They have some classes still available on campus, some classes still available online like they usually would. However, a lot of classes that were only available on campus are now only available online. I'm really taking advantage of that. This semester will probably be my very favorite semester because not only do I have online classes, but I have a full schedule worth of online classes. All of the seven classes, each of those seven classes, they of course go to my major, my minor, they're going to help me graduate. They're all needed, necessary classes. But also they're all online and I'm a good online student but the thing is though like they're gonna help me graduate their classes I need but they're also all online that are normally not and I didn't have any online class options left I spent my first like year and a half to two years of being a college student being online and then as soon as I ran out of on class online class options, you know, I was forced to come here. Long story short, just a little bit about that, and I'll tell the story more in depth and detail at another time when I'm feeling braver, and just another time. Anyway, I tried school spring of 2017, like three springs ago, and it didn't work out. I got really sick. My insomnia was so bad, my mental health, I just totally crashed, got really sick just for months. So I had to leave school as an emergency, like a health emergency. I deferred because of health, so I changed my track, my semesters around, and yeah, it was hard, it was scary, the scariest thing that I've ever had to go through, and it was one of the hardest things in my life, and anyway, a part of why my parents moved here a year ago, yeah, it's been like the year mark, a year and a month, I think, last August, um, anyway, a part of why they did that was so that I could live at home while being a student. Education is very important to my parents, to my family. It's not ideal for me to attend this school, obviously for my parents, it's a church school. They're Mormon, technically I am just for the time being, but just how I feel about the church and how I feel about my education, I would prefer to be somewhere else. But to make my parents happy, to keep smiles on their faces, and especially to live at home with my anxiety, I have to be attending the school that they want me to attend. It's just like a family thing to go there, it's a family rule kind of. So anyway, I'm just so glad and grateful. I'm a happy camper. I got all online classes, so I'm still trying to put together my social life, and I still have plans, and my parents, they're trying to implement this goal where I have at least one social event or activity or like hangout, whatever, once a week. So I'm putting that into place, and I have some plans not this Friday but next and I planned it last week so it was like two weeks in advance I started planning with my friend and it was cute like see you in class we have like three online classes together and I've met her like two semesters ago at school on campus I think fall semester of last year and then essentially we were like see you later and then like see see you next next Friday so it was cute and I had to throw that in the video because I thought it was a cute little statement but anyway so shout out to Breezy hopefully that works and we don't get consumed by school and just overwhelmed by all the homework and classes that we just die but anyway um, I, talk. I just need that for a little bit okay so does Zach do um, so my cousin actually gets married. This is her second wedding, I guess. Now she's getting married in the temple. You know those pretty white buildings LDS owned, you know, the Mormon temples. Um, so now she's going to be sealed. That's what we called. 
That's what we call it. That's what we call it. It's called a sealing. So that's how you're married in the church by getting married in the temple. And so she had the civil marriage, but it was very quiet and um, just not ideal for her, not her imagined dream, you know, that every girl dreams of because they want their big day to be just this big day, this big thing. So now she's trying again. You know, coronavirus a few months ago was even worse, and now it's just not the same. So she'll be having it bigger, and we're going to have some friends come, some family friends are going to come along on a little trip. We got family down in Utah. We got family down in Utah. The wedding, the reception, it's down in Utah. So we're going to take these family friends, and then, oh, also tomorrow, the same family friend who's my age, his brother's here too, so that's who I'm referring to. Anyway, his birthday's tomorrow, so we'll take him out to eat. He's a college student here. His brother's a little frashy here. He's a little baby freshman, his first time here. And so we're going to treat him and then treat them for this trip. They'll see some family in Utah, and then they'll come with us to the reception. I'm so very excited. Like, it's fun to hang out with people, obviously, but I'm also excited because, and anxious, because that's how I get with social anxiety. Like, even my online classes, like... It's a conference, it's a meeting online, you don't see them face to face, but you see a screen face and your screen face, you know, but anyway. Um, so they're going to be there at the reception, and my family, my mom's side, meets up together a lot, or as often as we can, not like we used to. Now people are older, people got school, and work, and families of their own, so people are growing up and getting older, and they're moving on, you know, which I'm grateful for because I'm ready to have my own life, my own start. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. But anyway, my mom's side, um, I don't know how to explain it. We don't really see my dad's side, but my mom's side can kind of have like clicks. So I'm glad to be like distracted and invested in friends, like distracted by friends, invested with them and by them, you know, if that makes sense. I don't know, but I think it's going to be a good fun time. I'm a little anxious because it's just, it's people, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to count my blessings and then get into another topic. And by the way, my mental health, just like a mental health chat, right? Um, let's see where I'm at first. Hopefully my camera's not getting too hot. But anyway, um... Wait, was I at 12? I'm not paying attention. Um, okay, now basically 13. Alright, I won't talk for too much longer because I want to be nice to my camera's heat by not making it hotter. What? Anyway. Okay, so, um, my mental health, I felt more of a depression and less mania and manic tendencies throughout my day. So I am a rapid cycler, and what that means is basically it's bipolar disorder, but it's on and off throughout the day. It occurs very fast, those mood changes, and mine are basically two. So there's like two different zones. There's the euphoric, that manic stage, and then there's the opposite feeling where it's a very low, low, like it's depression. Um, I was diagnosed with major depression years ago, and um, my makeup's probably trash. Oh, he's licking me. He's giving me little loves and kisses. Um, anyway, so major depression. I was diagnosed with that years ago, late in high school. And then um, upon the emergency home from school, from college, you know, three years ago, um, that was when I found out about the bipolar. So bipolar, it's always interesting. And I've really hit a slump. Um... I don't really think my major depression was non-existent. I think it was there, but then it like morphed into bipolar. And it just, it like transformed. I think as you progress, as you age, you change, obviously. But your brain, what does that even mean? I was gonna say brain and mind at the same time. Your brain. <laughs> anyway, um, you change, you grow, you are always forming into the next version of yourself whether that's good bad and I don't want to say there is a good or a bad it just is you know it's just things develop and you change you morph into the new you so that was what was happening to me I think my depression morphed into something else it grew it expanded into a bipolar disorder 
So it changed from strict sadness to on and off, up and down, a roller coaster ride, euphoric versus depression. So I've really felt a lack of euphoric vibes per se, and a lot more of the depression. Like every night, I just had really dark, clouded thoughts in my head as I fall asleep. And it's like my insomnia returns where I can't fall asleep until around 12 at night, whereas before I take my sleep meds and then I'm out. I'm just out like a light. But these past few days, even maybe up to two weeks, I've just felt less of that, just less of a good night's sleep. So, um, just dark clouded thoughts, mood change, just feeling down. Uh, not nearly as bad as my junior year of high school. I will never forget those times, those dark points and periods in my life where everything was melancholy and the worst shade of blue. Not to hate on the color blue, but just symbolically and metaphorically it was. It was not fun. <laughs> Never is. So I'm working on that and I'm saying in my prayers, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just help me with this. Obviously you want to start a prayer of gratitude. You want to start your prayer with your grateful list, you know, your gratitude list. But then you ask for things and I've been asking for this and it seems like nothing's happening or changing, but that's okay. And it's not my period. I got my IUD, whatever. Um, that's... That's helped. So, done with the period, which was not three months like the first time I got it in. It was less than a week, which is amazing for me. But anyway, um, so yeah, I'm just trying to say my gratitude list more at night. So I'm trying to think of myself in my gratitude list, like observing my list or living and breathing my list, you know? Like put myself through those words, through those ideas of my list, like all of the happies, happies. And then I also tend to think of, and I've been doing this for a while now, I tend to think of myself in that field. My Nana Frida, who has since passed, her friend, I don't want to say best friend, I don't know how close they were, but she had a really good friend, very cool, who painted, and she could totally paint. And if there's one thing in this earth life that I can take with me when I die and part ways with this beloved planet, it's going to be this picture above all else. It's just beautiful. It's the colors and the scenery, and it's like this cartoon painting, but it just comes to life, and it's so real and raw, you know? So I imagine myself there, and it's just peaceful and beautiful, and it's just this lovely feeling where there's joy, and that's like all you feel. And I would be alone there. That would be my ideal place. I would just have my introvert time where I can just think my thoughts and ponder my ponderings, and I can just be myself 100%, 24-7, no concerns, no social anxiety, none of that nonsense, none of that garbage. But anyway, um, yeah, so my gratitude list. This is what I've been saying in my prayers. Sometimes I forget my prayers, sometimes I say my prayers in the shower. It's not like work where with my job, the way to work, the way home, like the half hour there and back, I would say my prayers out loud in the car behind the wheel on the road, you know? But now I'm like saying them in the showers and I'm trying to, in the showers. I'm saying them, the prayers, in the shower. So I'm weird. I'm whack. But anyway. Um, so just trying more to be grateful, to enjoy the small things that really add up to big things and a big happy life. I want like a quiet life, but I want my gratitude list to be big and to always be growing and being added to, you know. So with that... I think of my car, this guy right here, Silver Mermaid, right, um, Quicksilver on the weekends, you know, bought it off my parents and I recently paid it off because of that job within the span of just a few months, you know, so it's paid in full, I just got to worry about all the big kid stuff, you got maintenance and gas and insurance, you know, so I'm working on those things and I'm doing those things and then just being able to have had a job during coronavirus, we took the proper precautions of course there's masks and there's social distancing in the office and it's a job that I can go back to we'll see if coronavirus improves or if it gets worse hopefully it doesn't we hope and pray it doesn't but I have a job to go back to if that works out work will work out hopefully you know so I have my foot through the door and 
they're inviting me back they want me back which is great and very nice of them so that's work in the car and then there's school it's not ideal it's not my ideal in a perfect world I would be on my own I would live with someone maybe on my own I don't know how that would work out um, I would just be so happy and content but I can't live like that because of my anxiety I can't live on my own right now and my ideal world would include either a different school or being an author full-time um, I'm trying to write my book right now while a student at a school that I don't necessarily want to go to but I'm gonna be an elementary ed teacher which is my goal I'm gonna write books and my goal is to officially start this next year so it's not while I'm on my own it's not at a school I want to necessarily be at and go to but these are things that are going to get me to my goals. They're not necessarily things I want right now or would want, period. But the ultimate goal is to teach and to write and obviously to be on my own. That's my number one wish right now. I really want to be on my own. That's my dream. I like drool at the thought of it and I'm trying to stash my cash, you know, trying to spend less. That's another thing. I'm constantly adding things to my Poshmark and I've sold several things now I mean less than 20 over 10 you know somewhere in between but I'm feeling content and happy about my possessions I have to go through all of the shiz under my bed I got a lot of shit under my bed like craftsy things especially clothes way deep in the corner I would use my legs to push them back I didn't want my parents to find them but I can think in my head at least two pieces that have to go that I don't wear that I know I'll never wear one I've worn like twice. No, I haven't. I haven't worn it at all. But I was wanting to wear it twice, but I was scared my parents weren't going to approve, you know? So, just things I wasted my money on. Things I know I'm not going to like or use or wear. You know, just trying to be happy with what I have and not feel like I have to go buy more. And I'm going to try to downsize and scale down. I'll try my best, my hardest. It's hard for me to let things go. But uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, so there's that. And the last thing, then I'll conclude and end it. But um, basically, I will say my trip. I'm so excited. It's always in the back of my mind, and it's been in the back of my mind for weeks and months. Ever since, technically, I moved, I've been wanting to go back. So I'll be going back to where I used to live in southeastern Washington, and um, I'm excited. Hopefully it works out. Hopefully the dates match up with my friend's schedule. Hopefully she's free that time. We are trying to plan and figure things out and make a solid, secure, stable plan and schedule. I gave her some dates, some ideas. She'll have to consult with her parents and plan out that week or that time where we're in between semesters, you know, me and her. And she lives at home. I live at home. We're just in different states. And we're both doing school. We're both being productive and feeling accomplished. And I'm just proud of ourselves, of us. And I just really miss her and I really want to see her. And it will be awesome to stay with her. Hopefully her parents are okay with me coming back. I hope they still like me. Hopefully I wasn't too crazy. Um, but it will have been a year. That's like 12 months exactly. It will be the end of December hopefully. Last time I stayed through New Year's. But it will have been a year. And then the time before that it was a six month break of did not see you, could not see you, too much going on, couldn't get over there. And I would have gone there just a few months ago, or maybe even the two-week break that I had after working before the semester started this last week, you know. I really wanted to go, but because of COVID, you know. But now things are starting to settle and slow down. Hopefully things aren't spiraling as much out of control as they once were. But anyway, um, with that I will also get to see Chris hopefully um, hopefully he still wants to see me <laughs> no just kidding we've talked about it and 